All right, guys, uh, welcome AP World History students to your Unit 7 exam review. I hope you use this video uh, to your benefit on your exam. All right, so we're going to start with World War I. We've got several topics. Uh, obviously, Maine is the four main causes of World War I. We have militarism, alliances, imperialism, dealing with the colonies, of course, uh, and nationalism, which is an enormous deal. And one of the biggest causes, probably, uh, of World War I. Um, you're going to see these European colonies, are European powers using their colonies to help them fight in the war. You especially see this in uh, India, where the British use a lot of Indian troops for support uh, in the war. Now, they had to be careful with this because uh, one of their enemies is the Ottoman Empire, which belongs to the Central Powers. Central Powers are... Uh, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire are the, are the big three there. And the Ottomans, of course, are Muslim. So the Brits are afraid that by fighting these Muslims, you might see an uprising amongst Muslims in India. So that is something they're concerned with. Uh, definitely World War I is our first total war. And we can call it that because you see a lot of government intervention in the economies, um, telling businesses what they can produce, um, price fixes, things like that. There's also a lot of civilian support. You see rationing. You see women working in uh, the factories. Uh, everything is is uh, you know used for the for the war effort basically. Now we don't really talk much about the battles of World War One. You know, of course, in the West you had you had um, uh, trench warfare. Of course, in the West it was more mobile in the East on the border between Germany and Russia. Um, and the picture we get of World War One, of course, is in the West between Germany and France. Uh, brutal war. About eight and a half million soldiers lose their lives. About 20 to 22 million total people, um, civilians and soldiers there. Now, the war is ended by the Treaty of Versailles, which is, of course, this uh, garbage treaty that does a lot of damage. You see land loss for the Germans. They lose the Rhineland. Uh, Russians lose uh, parts of their country, which will become Poland, uh, Latvia, Estonia, some other places as well. You also see there's no respect to Italy and Japan, who had fought on the side of the Allies during this war. That's going to come back to haunt Europe when those two countries become very aggressive nations um, leading up to World War II. There's no end to colonies after World War I, although uh, the American president, Woodrow Wilson, sought uh, for this to happen. It did not happen. And they're going to use those colonies to help uh, fix their economies after the war. And so you're still going to have some of this competition that exists out there, which will help play a role in the World War II. The War Guilt, Cla the war, war guilt Clause uh, was given to Germany. So they had to sign off that it was exclusively their fault, World War I was. That's going to lead to bitterness and resentment that will help, you know, help the rise of Adolf Hitler, of course, in Germany. You also see a contraction of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the Ottoman Empire is getting smaller. It was already getting smaller before World War I um, because in the Balkans you had all these ethnic uprisings, uh, these ethnic groups that belonged to the Ottomans that weren't, they weren't Muslim, uh, they weren't Arab, and so they didn't feel like they belong. You know, the Greeks are there and Yugoslavia and um, Serbia, Bosnia, all these Balkan areas. Um, after World War I, of course, the Ottoman Empire will fall apart and the Ottomans will become just Turkey. And Turkey's just going to, uh, it's going to be nationalism. Now they don't have to worry about all these other stupid people. They can just worry about the Turks themselves, is kind of how they put it. Now, following World War I, you have a lot of uncertainty about life in general. You get the lost generation. Uh, in America, these artists and writers who lose faith in humanity and move off to uh, Europe and all this stuff. You see new advancements in physics. Einstein issues his uh, special theory of relativity, um, which calls into question sort of the Newtonian physics uh, that we'd had for several hundred years. You got Frederick Nietzsche, who's challenging Western morality and famously says God is dead, this and that. Again, World War I, it changes how we view ourselves. You get a rise in new art. Pablo Picasso's Cubism, you get Dadism, which is sort of like a collage type art, and then of course Surrealism, which is 
Uh, it's sort of realistic, but it has dreamlike qualities to it. Uh, also tying in with the end of World War I, you get the Russian Revolution. The Russian Revolution was caused by three main factors you have to know. Uh, the Russo-Japanese War was a massive loss for the Russians, an embarrassing loss in 1905. Also in 1905, you had Bloody Sunday, which was the workers' strike, the workers' uprising. And the Tsar orders his soldiers to fire on them, and like a thousand are killed. So that's going to lead to the Tsar's uh, murder. And then the third one is the most important, of course. The, you know, seven million or so Russians who lose their lives during World War I. It's horrific. It's bad. It's going to cause the downfall of the dynasty. Tsar Nicholas II and his family uh, ended up getting killed because of their actions and decisions they made pertaining to World War uh, One and also the other two causes above. Uh, Rasputin, of course, remember the holy monk, how he protected uh, Tsar Nicholas's son, and because of that one influence and that led people to hate him, was also a mark against Tsar Nicholas II. It would be Vladimir Lenin who ended up taking control of Russia following the downfall of the Tsar. Uh, he promises land, peace, and bread. Uh, but in the beginning, to get things back on after a very bloody Russian Civil War, of course, uh, he would have to use limited capitalism to end up restoring the economy. Then uh, they would establish their command economy, which is socialism. Uh, you, what you saw was the government had to directly intervene in the economy. Uh, certainly not capitalism here. Uh, Lenin would end up taking land from the rich kulaks who were uh, landowning uh, farmers, basically. And they would redistribute to serfs, to peasants that didn't have any land. The Russians uh, liked collectivism. The Soviets did. And so they took, ended up taking land from personal people and uh, creating these huge collective farms with sometimes as many as 25,000 uh, Russians on them. Uh, the Russians focused on industry first and then agriculture. Remember the sickle and the hammer. Uh, but their biggest focus first is industry. You can imagine after World War I, it was an industrial war. So they don't want to fall behind. They were already behind. It was a big reason so many of them died. So industry first for them and then agriculture. Now, Chinese Revolution is happening uh, around the same time. Um, they overthrew the Qing dynasty. So all the thousands of years worth of dynasties will come to an end. Uh, we developed two sides. The nationalist side is led by uh, Kai Shek. And the communist side is going to be led by Mao Zedong. You have a very long, bloody civil war that is interrupted, of course, uh, when the Japanese invade. So we'll have a little bit of a timeout for World War II, but it will continue after that. Uh, one of the famous events of the Chinese Civil War was the Long March, where uh, Mao Zedong's communists were surrounded. 100,000 of them were surrounded by hundreds of thousands of nationalists. And so they went on this crazy escape plan. They ended up making them march 6,000 miles throughout China. And all along the way, they're dying uh, by nationalist forces. They're dying because of exposure. They're in the mountains and stuff. And of those 100,000, uh, only a couple thousand walk out of there. Uh, but along the way, uh, Mao Zedong will ingratiate himself with the people of China, who are mostly peasants. And that is his support group. Uh, the Soviets would be supporting the communists in the Civil War. America and other places also sent some money to the nationalists, but... Um, we did not put as much support towards uh, the nationalists as the Soviets did for the communists. Now, Mao immediately connects with the peasants. He redistributes land. He takes land away from people and redistributes it to the people. In China, a difference between them and Russia is that agriculture comes first. It's more important. Then industry comes in after that. Uh, both the Russian and Chinese revolutions were shaped by nationalism and socialism as well. And both of those revolutions saw direct intervention of the government uh, in the economy. Now, in 1929, we get the stock market crash in America, which is going to pull the world into Great Depression. It's bad in America, but it's worse in Germany. And the it's so such a dis desperate situation that it's going to allow for the rise of Hitler. Remember, Hitler failed to take over the government in the Beer Hall Putsch uh, and was put in prison. For nine months, where he wrote Mein Kampf, which outlined his ideals of what Germany should be. Um, Hitler begins rebuilding the military, going against the Treaty of Versailles, 
And uh, this allows jobs. And so Germany will get out of the Great Depression fairly quickly, uh, far quicker than uh, the rest of Europe and America. Um, now, the Great Depression in general means that the governments of America, Britain, and these other places have to take more direct action to stimulate economic growth. Uh, in the West, you see New Deal type policies where you're trying to get people jobs and you're doing conservation. Uh, you had FDR in America. Uh, you had Neville Chamberlain in uh, Britain trying to fix these things. Uh, of course, Hitler and Mussolini are going to use the military to help get them out of the Great Depression. You see the rise of fascism. Uh, fascism was uh, not rounded, but founded by Mussolini in Italy in 1922. What is fascism? An extreme branch of nationalism, uh, but it has an alliance with big businesses. So it's opposite, of course, of socialism. Uh, fascists and socialists hate each other. Nazism is the German version of fascism, and it's based off of racism and this idea of a German master race. Of course, Jews are their biggest targets. Hitler will become chancellor in 1933 and sole dictator by 1934. Um, in 1935, he passes the Nuremberg Laws, which will officially segregate the Jews in Germany. It will take things away from them. It will force them to wear the Star of David. And of course, we know that's going to end up leading to the Holocaust later on. Uh, Hitler and Nazis saw the Jews as being the cause of the loss in World War I for Germany. Now, World War II will start when, uh, again, it can, you can call it when Japan invades China, or you could say September 1st, 1939, when Hitler invades Poland. Um, but it is the Axis versus the Allied powers. <clears throat> um, and and one thing I didn't put on here that you should remember, remember the non-aggression pact between Hitler and uh, Stalin, the idea that they won't attack each other. Um, Japanese imperialism is a major cause for World War II in Southeast Asia as they are carving up all these colonial holdings of Europe. And, of course, they, they carved up China. Uh, you have the Holocaust, which happens in Central Europe. Uh, Jews, uh, Polish people, uh, these gypsies, all these groups that the Nazis did not like. Uh, throughout World War II, you had massive firebombing all across Europe and Japan. Cities are ground to rubble. Uh, you see massive loss of, of civilian life along with uh, the, the lives of soldiers. And this will play a role. Um, you know, Japan is refusing to surrender with anything, which will, of course, lead to uh, the dropping of the atomic bomb uh, because the Japanese are unwilling to quit. All right. That is your test in a nutshell. Um, I think if you break this apart, think about it. Don't just put this stuff on your one pager because you need to understand and process this stuff. OK, uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. I'm glad to help. And um, Good luck on your test.